What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again to the power of the internet. And tonight I want to talk to you about loneliness, uh, chronic loneliness and uh, social isolation. Um, and what it's like to not feel like you belong and not to be a part of society and not to have a, a friend or very many friends or not to get along with your family and the impact it can have on you. Now this is uh, something that's affected me a large portion of my life um, I felt like I couldn't associate with the kids uh, around me growing up. I felt like I couldn't associate with the adults around me growing up. Uh, because of my obesity, of course, I've been pariah. Uh, I, I find it difficult to go over to a friend's home, for example, because I don't know that I'll fit on their furniture or things to that effect. Um, and it's always made it very difficult to connect with somebody. Um, and often I've connected with uh, people over gaming, which has been the... But we'll get to that. And the reason I'm making this video is because I read a, a study that recently said that social isolation is more deadly by twice it's more likely to kill you twice as likely to kill you than morbid obesity and that obviously caught my eye um, but that's bizarre so i went on to read the article and it said that people who are chronically lonely pro chronically socially isolated um, have a higher tendency to commit suicide uh, they tend to be uh, have a lower quality of life um, they succumb to illnesses easier it sucks. Um, as a kid, I had no friends. And I thought about suicide all the time. Now, the internet, the article said, goes on to actually compound the problem. Because we use the internet to work as a surrogate for an actual relationship. And I have some friends in my life. Um, my good friend Tim. My good friend Adam. My good friend... Uh, my, my good friend... Uh, Jay, my good friend, so there are just so many people that I've uh, never met physically that, that are, are, are that very important in my life, very important in my life, and those relationships are wonderful relationships, and I, I'm not questioning that for a second, some of these, so, some of the best friends in my life, I've never that met, sort of like a relationship you know, is very interesting. I've met them through World of Warcraft, I've met them through gaming, I've met them through so it's YouTube almost confusing, thing. you know, and um, I'm trying to clear it. But that said, Simplicity they can't provide is not the way I would all of the things that an actual it. support structure can. It's just the my good friend Adam human life was very pivotal to in my healing. The sky. And I'm did more everything interested he could, but there was only the so much and the concept of that he can do. So being in, things in that I use is usually material. And I know that a lot of people, one of the reasons YouTube simple, is so successful, and, um, and one of the reasons I think that's around the, relate to me house, so much you know? is because <laughs> Right now, no, it feels like you and I are in the same room together, and, and I'm so able to talk to you about this really important like stuff, the, and I can hopefully keep your mind in the right mindset like, to deal you know, with this kind of stuff, or at least make you realize how lucky you are to not have to be with it, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, there's only so much I can do. There's only so much any of us can do. The point that I'm making is... Material in order to make the have. friends that I have, in order to have the fiancé that I'm about to marry, and you know, music is so important. Uh, it wasn't YouTube, that's at least one thing that's that, that um, and that's okay. we created. It certainly wasn't. I've been human broke the created. majority of my life, and I'm certainly not rich. I think it's to do with the, but, the fact that the, the um, vibration of it is so important. Some people are going to say, well, you've always been charismatic. You create the vibration. Funny. No, I that, wasn't. Um, I was a judgmental, full-on, negative, prick bastard. Who was socially awkward and made jokes that offended and upset people and made them not want to be around me. It was uh, hard work. Sounds and hard expression. work. It's very, very friends. important for all I had to meet not just a handful of people, that's what we but have. hundreds of people. We don't need an instrument to make that one friend. An instrument was made and so after we had a What voice. I'm trying to say it's here the is most original if you are suffering from chronic loneliness, if you're suffering from social I was also like an artist, the most this is not just artist. the quality of your that life. I treasure what I made. Of your life. And uh, I don't And it's going to it. suck. It should stay. It's eternal. going to suck to try to when make a friend. That's the concept that okay? artists have. It's going to suck when you, once you make, make an asshole out of yourself that, and, and, that you're and, and you make a joke that offends people. You want or, it to or you're just too fat. Uh, you know, or whatever. Whatever eternal. it is that keeps you for making those relationships and being changed. able to fully connect Nobody with another friend it. or a girl or a guy like or whatever it is you're into or a, a romantic relationship or a friendship we know whatever it is is keeping you anyway. from doing that you gotta you gotta practice <laughs> so to I fix thought, it well you know it'd be good and you're to gonna meet a lot of assholes change in the but if you have that. to meet 
a thousand assholes think of life to make a friend as good as my friend Jack. Really great. My friend Jason. And it's very interesting because even, you know, some just a little way stuff. of the wind but is blowing or if you if you have to the, meet a thousand the weather, the to make that one friend, or something or the light, you know. Life. And I'm suddenly and standing very least, in uh, another country, San Francisco. Francisco. Right now. It's very real. It's very interesting. I know how when hard you start to go into later life, you don't lose anything. You have your and walk into World of Warcraft and say, this is enough, this is enough, I'm happy. Uh, teenage you know? period. It's, it's like a process. And uh, when you start to wrap it, and finally when true. They are totally still. It's like a sculpture, and then the sculpture starts to move. You know, it's a go through an incredible, interesting um, changes. The incredible uh, changes that you're going through and all that is life. You know, and the sky um, is very permanent, not changing, and we change. That sort of like a relationship is very interesting. Life is too complex, so it's almost confusing, you know, and I'm trying to clear it. Simplicity and complexity is not the way I would explain it. It's just um, human life as opposed to the sky. And it's very interesting because it's just a little way of the wind is blowing or uh, the the weather, the temperature, or something, or the light, you know. And I'm suddenly standing in uh, another country, or San Francisco or something. Very real. It's very interesting. When you start to go into um, a later life, you don't lose anything. You have your childhood, your um, uh, teenage period, and uh, your youth. All that is still in me. Vocal um, sounds and expression is very, very important for all of us because that's what we have. We don't need an instrument. An instrument was made after we had a voice. This is the most original sound that we have. I was also like an artist, the most general artist, that I treasured what I make, and uh, I didn't want people to touch it. It should stay eternally. Well, that's the concept that artists have, you know, that once you make a piece that, that you're satisfied with, you want it to uh, stay eternally and never change. Nobody should change it. And I was like that, too, and I thought, why do we do that when we know that it's going to change anyway? <laughs> so I thought, well, you know, it'd be good to include change in the work of art. So it's a very strange world out there, and, and I, uh, in, in a way, I see it from some distance, and I see it with uh, um, with amusement. So it's a very strange world out there, and, and I, uh, in, in a way, I see it from some distance, and I see it oh. with uh, uh, with amusement. So it's a very strange world out there, and, and I, uh, in, in a way. I see it from some distance, and I see it with uh, uh, with amusement. So it's a very strange world out there, and, and I, uh, in a way, I see it from some distance, and I see it with uh, uh, with amusement, but I don't want to mix into it. The next time you're out, you're sitting in a restaurant. There's a couple sitting next to you. You know, you look at them and you give a smile, and you say something like. Hey, do you believe in fate? How did you come here tonight? Did you plan on coming here tonight? Be open. Be friendly with people. And you might hear an answer like, no, as a matter of fact, we weren't supposed to come here tonight. We were supposed to go out with friends of ours, but she got sick. So 
we're here tonight just because of that. I said, exactly. I said, you know what? I, then you say, you know what? I happen to be in the business that, that deals with people, and you look like the type of people that I like to be in business with. Now, if they really look like two gangsters, you're not going to say, you look like We are connected of across our lifespan to one another through a myriad horizons. of invisible forces start that, like gravity, are ubiquitous and powerful. I mean, there are so many... After all, social species, by definition, create emergent structures that extend beyond an organism. Structures that range from couples and families to schools and nations and cultures. These structures evolved hand in hand with neural, hormonal, and genetic mechanisms to support them because the consequent social behavior helped these organisms survive, reproduce, and leave a genetic legacy. To grow to an adulthood for a social species, including humans, is not to become autonomous and solitary. It's to become the one on whom others can depend. Whether we know it or not, our brain and biology have been shaped to favor this outcome. The evolutionary biologist David Sloan Wilson notes that if you ask people what are the traits of a good person? You hear traits such as kind, generous, compassionate, and empathic. If you ask people, what are the traits of an evil person? You hear traits such as cruel, greedy, exploitive, and selfish. Said differently, the traits of a good person depict someone who cares about themselves and others. And an evil person cares about themselves at the expense of others. Across our biological heritage, our brain and biology has been sculpted to incline us towards certain ways of feeling, thinking, and behaving. For instance, we have a number of biological machineries that capitalize on aversive signals to motivate us to act in ways that are essential for our survival. Hunger, for instance, is triggered by low blood sugar and motivation. In the 1980s, an important been a fall made real in the vision of the International Financial Services Center. Time and effort the center now employs over 9,000 people, generates hundreds of millions in tax revenue. Restaurant. Been a fall also Third transforms is an the temple bar district that motivates into one of the most attractive cultural quarters, making an important contribution to generating and pain all the year round tourism. System. We worked hard to reach the point potential tissue where the Irish and motivates leaders us to take care of the industries of the body. future. You might think that the biological warning machinery stops there, but there's more. Although not common sense, although not intuitive, the pain and aversiveness of loneliness, of feeling isolated from those around you, is also part of a biological early warning machinery to alert you to threats and damage to your social body, which you also need to survive and prosper. Now, just about all of us have felt physical pain, and nearly all of us have felt the heartbreak of homesickness, the agony of bereavement, the torment of unrequited love, and the pain of being shunned. All of these are variations on the experience of loneliness. When I started to study the effects of loneliness in brain and biology a couple of decades ago, Loneliness had been characterized as a gnawing chronic disease without redeeming features. It was even equated with shyness and depression, with being a loner, a person with marginal social skills. Scientific measurements and sophisticated calculations, to our surprise, revealed that these were myths. Science and common sense had again produced two very different depictions of a phenomenon. And yet, if you look at the way we are increasingly living our lives, it shows the extent to which we still buy in to those myths of loneliness and values of autonomy and independence. Good afternoon. The Welsh football manager, Gary Speed, has died at the age of 42. The Football Association of Wales has told the BBC that it appears he had taken his own life. Tributes are being paid to him on Twitter, including one from Robbie Savage, who said the world has lost a great man in Gary Speed. I'm devastated. I spoke to him yesterday morning. Why, why, why? I will miss him so much. Mark Bright, the BBC football pundit, tweeted, I just cannot believe it. Gary Speed has passed away. I'm stunned. 
so sorry to hear this. And Chris Moyles, who's famously a Leeds fan, said, just heard the very sad news about Gary Speed. Such a sad loss and so young. Well, I mentioned Robbie Savage a little earlier there. He actually is with me here in the studio now. Um, you spoke to him yesterday. Yeah, I spoke to, um, spoke to him yesterday morning. Um, you know, we had a good chat. We were laughing and joking. You know, he'd, he'd been to Strictly Come Dancing in, I think, three or four weeks ago, and he sat in the audience with his wife. And after my routine, I high-fived him. He's in a bar after we got a few drinks. And he was larger than life. And mm. I spoke to him yesterday. He was in high spirits. And I'm half. I can't believe it. I mean, I, I watched him on Football Focus yesterday, as many millions did. Um, I talked to Dan Walker, who presented the programme a little earlier. He said there was nothing to suggest. Any problems, anything untoward at all? No, nothing at all. I am just I just can't believe it. You know, he's, he's my mate and he's gone. It's like I've gone very close to Gary in the last, in the last few years. Mm. You know, he's, the guy is a terrific. He's left two gorgeous kids behind da, 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 him. Beautiful da, da, wife. Da, da, da. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Today's topic, playing. What does it mean? I'll ask my students, what did you do last weekend? And they'll say, I played. And to this, I laugh. Because playing is uh, an activity that uh, only children do. All right? So if you're a baby, onwards up to 12 years old, you can play. Playing is considered a mindless activity. For example, watch. Or, let's say you have two glasses of water, and you're like, you know, Places they want to be. People want to customize their lives. They want to go in and out of all the places they are because the thing that matters most to them is control over where they put their attention. So you want to go to that board meeting, but you only want to pay attention to the bits that interest you. And some people think that's a good thing. But you can end up hiding from each other even as we're all constantly connected to each other. 50-year-old businessman laments to me that he feels he doesn't have colleagues anymore at work. When he goes to work, he doesn't stop by to talk to anybody, he doesn't call, and he says he doesn't want to interrupt his colleagues because he says they're too busy on their email. Across the generations, I see that people can't get enough of each other, if and only if, they can have each other at a distance in amounts they can control. I call it the Goldilocks effect. Not too close, not too far, just right. But what might feel just right for that middle-aged executive can be a problem for an adolescent who needs to develop face-to-face -face relationships. An 18-year-old boy who uses texting for almost everything says to me wistfully, Someday, someday, but certainly not now, I'd like to learn how to have a conversation. When I ask people, what's wrong with having a conversation? People say, I'll tell you what's wrong with having a conversation. It takes place in real time, and you can't control what you're going to say. So that's the bottom line. Texting, email, posting, all of these things let us present the self as we want to be. We get to edit, and that means we get to delete. And that means we get to retouch the face, the voice, the flesh, the body. Not too little, not too much, just right.